New York City, New York, November 2019. After four years of construction, the Empire State Building's remodeled 102nd floor observatory is finally revealed to the public. Costing a staggering $165 million, the renovation also includes a 10,000 square foot museum and an all new observation deck, offering visitors a 360 degree view from atop the building. One that has often been called the eighth wonder of the world. Designated a National Historic Landmark in 1986, many consider the Empire State Building to be not only the most recognizable building in New York City, but also the entire world. Over 20,000 people arrive to work here every day, taking one of the 73 elevators to offices located across 103 floors. Nearly 2.7 million square feet of office space in all, in fact, the 1,454-foot building is so large, it was even given its own zip code. Originally designed to be a symbol of America's indomitable spirit and ingenuity, until 1972, the Empire State Building enjoyed its unique status as the world's tallest building. The Empire State Building was scheduled to be 1,000 feet. The Chrysler Building was 1,046. So they determined that they would ensure that they would be the world's tallest building by adding a 200-foot high mast atop the building. You could almost call it the race of the titans. The idea of the world's tallest tower always gains attention. And there is a certain kind of status that's given to any building that's going to break a record because it certainly is a signal achievement. As anticipated, when the Empire State Building finally opened on May 1st, 1931, its coveted status as the tallest building in the world brought it international renown. But why construct a building to tower more than a thousand feet above the earth? If monuments like the Capitol Building and the Washington Monument are meant to symbolize a connection to something greater than ourselves, could the Empire State Building be an attempt to literally ascend from the Earth and touch the heavens? The thrill of being at the top of the Empire State Building is, is really to, to be above it all, to look out to the harbor and have the, the thrill of nearly infinite vision. There are many historical paradigms to summarize the achievements through the ages. For the Romans, it might be the Pantheon. For the Greeks, it might be the Parthenon. But the Empire State Building summarizes the idea about what America wanted to be in the 20th century. According to historians, the romantic notion of being above it all was taken to the extreme when the Empire State Building first opened. The stock market was going up, real estate investment was rampant. They needed to have some extra measure of modernity that signaled that this building not just stood above the rest, but participated in this upper stratum of the, the world of business. So they imagined that they would add the docking station for dirigibles, for the zeppelins. A dirigible docking station? Is it possible that the Empire State Building, hailed as a symbol of America's can-do attitude and industrial might, was actually envisioned to be the world's tallest airport? They said, we will drag it into the building, crank it down. The dirigible can be moored to the top of the mooring mast. A gangplank can be dropped to the 103rd floor where there was a platform that ringed the building, and the passengers can de-dirigible down a gangplank 1,250 feet in the air. It was the looniest building scheme since the Tower of Babel. The first test of the Empire State Building's docking station was a massive failure. Although workers managed to pass a mailbag over from the top of the tower, the tethered airship was rocked by high winds while attempting to dock. After the Hindenburg disaster in 1937, 
the notion of commercial dirigible travel was abandoned altogether. <laughs>